Welcome to balancefood.ie. My name is Aoife Kerwin and I'm a nutritionist. I'm going to give you some uh, healthy eating tips today and also talk to you about the importance of our waist size. The waist is actually a very important indicator of what your health is like. And it's not, not just that we want to be vain and want nice waists, but it's a very important um, factor in whether you're prone to developing more heart disease or type 2 diabetes. What we're aiming for is if we measure our waists, we're hoping to get a measurement less than 32 inches in women or 80 centimeters or less than 37 inches in men or 94 centimeters. Below these levels, you're not at a uh, risk. Above these levels, you will be at risk for your health. So I'm going to show you how to measure your waist and work out your waist to hip ratio because what we want is we want to be more pear-shaped so that we don't have fat collecting around our middle. Because if we have fat collecting around our middle, that's a very bad type of fat and it collects around the internal organs and is an indicator of whether you will be more prone to developing diabetes and heart disease. So take a tape measure, an ordinary tape measure, and what we want to do is we want to find the top of our hip bone and the bottom of our ribs and we want to get a line about halfway between that. So an ordinary tape measure, stand with your feet apart and wrap the tape measure around your waist. So we get a measurement of 28 inches. So we'll write that down in case we forget. 28. And then we get the measurement of our hips. Now our hips measurement is the largest part of where we stick out, if you like. And again, that will be in inches, and we get a measurement of 37 inches. So we'll write up our waist measurement divided by our hip measurement. And that gives us a figure of 0.75. Now what we're looking for is we want that figure to end up being less than 0.85 for a woman or less than one for a man. And that gives us our waist to hip ratio. So we can use that and say that our hips are in a better proportion to our waist um, and that is an indicator that we're not uh, at great risk of type 2 diabetes and heart disease. We have another tool which is very useful in um, cl clinical practice or for anybody to work out themselves on a, a calculator, um, the BMI. The BMI stands for Body Mass Index and that just is an indicator of where you stand in the normal weight category or overweight category or the obese category. Now for this you only need your height in meters and that's quite simple to do. You can get somebody to measure your height at home, stand with your back to the wall, get a ruler and mark the position on the wall with a pencil and measure it then with a measuring tape. Then you need your weight in kilos and preferably done in the morning time uh, without any clothes on or with light clothing and no shoes. And then using the simple formula on the Balanced Food website, you'll be able to work out whether you uh, fit into the normal weight category. It has limitations. It's not useful um, for sports people because they have too much muscle mass and it doesn't distinguish between muscle and fat. Um, also, it has limitations for children and the elderly but it's still a very good indicator for the general population of where you stand uh, in terms of risk. And if you're in the normal weight category, uh, you're not at any great health risk. 
If you're in the overweight, then your health risks are greater, and obviously if you're in the obese category, then you have much greater health risks. I have a few tips for you on how just to balance out your diet. First of all, very important to have a good breakfast. A good breakfast sets you up for the daytime and hopefully then you don't make mistakes during the rest of the day uh, when you feel the hunger pangs. Always sit down when you're eating. If you eat standing up, you're much more likely to eat a lot more and a lot faster. So eat slowly. It takes 15 minutes for your brain to get a message that there's food in your stomach. So think of that when you're eating your meal and eat it slowly and then you're not likely to go and look for seconds. Try and include your five portions of fruit and vegetables a day. That means a combination of fruit and vegetables. And they're good for stop gapping in between meals. And that prevents you from having things like um, the snacks and, and bars and uh, biscuits in between. Try and use more whole grains, such as wholemeal bread, cereal, pasta, potato, rice, because they fill you up and they give you energy. And try and have these at every meal, so three times during the daytime. Keep to regular meals, include fish more often, and try and include oily fish in your weekly diet. Um, also, try and include some exercise. 30 minutes of exercise most days of the week. That can be walking or some exercise that you like doing, and that should hopefully help you get a bit of a better balance in your food uh, and your diet during the week.